So, they've found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. I'm getting too old for this. Who have we got lined up to deal with this problem? Uh, Murphy, sir. Oh, no, not Murphy. I'm afraid so, sir. What about Spade or Marlow? Uh, dead, sir. Isn't there anyone else? Sorry, sir, he's next on the list. Well, I suppose we'll have to make do. Knowing Murphy, he's going to need help. A lot of help. I'll check the archives and get back to you, sir. News of the day. As the Second World War enters its final days, Allied forces are on the march. The troops of the Western Alliance are occupied with the dangerous duty of ferreting out the remaining pockets of Nazi resistance. The storming of Berlin has crushed the heart of German opposition and sent remnants of the Fuhrer's troops scurrying into the dark reaches of the Black Forest. The Germans have vowed to fight to the last man in their quest for world domination. But their days are numbered, with Adolf Hitler dead and the once dreaded SS disbanded. The Allies have exposed the workings of the Nazi war machine and found it festering with ancient blood cults whose rituals and ceremonies are too astonishing and barbaric to detail. Allied forces will not rest until the last cult member has been revealed and captured. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. New San Francisco sparkles like a chunk of cubic zirconium, an island of hollow beauty surrounded by a red sea of radiation. Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. Most of them live in the new city, but I don't. I live among the unlucky souls, the mutants and the destitute and the wreckage of old San Francisco. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private detective, or at least I used to be. Since my marriage hit the rocks, I haven't done much of anything. I went out tonight for the first time in a week, but all I ended up doing was spending the last of my money on a bottle of cheap bourbon. Now it's past midnight, and I'm staring out of the window of my office on the second floor of the Ritz Hotel. Just like me, the Ritz used to be something. Now it's just another grimy building in a rundown part of town. And I'm almost out of bourbon. My God, Murphy, you look like hell. Really hit bottom, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I usually don't look this bad. I forgot to take my Geritol this morning. So, you want a drink? I saved my first one to have with you. No, thanks. I've been dry for eight years now. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror and decided I needed to make a few lifestyle changes. Quit smoking, quit drinking. Now I'm getting out of the business. Yep, I'm gonna move to the tropics and retire in a nice secluded island with a tribe of beautiful young women. You're getting out of the business? I guess that means the end of the world must be around the corner because you are the detective. I can't imagine you doing anything else, especially not running around an island with a bunch of nubile women in a loincloth. 
No, I can imagine it. I've been thinking about it for years now. Yeah. You know how it is. Lonely. Underappreciated. Dangerous. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in 38 years. I tell you, I'm working on a case right now, and that's going to be my last one. Huh? Enough about me. How about you, Tex? How's life treating you? Bad as it looks? <laughs> well, it depends. What day is it anyway today? Saturday? Well, Saturdays aren't too bad. It's normally Thursday by the time I get really suicidal. So what is it you wanted? Just come by to sprinkle a little salt into the uh, open wounds of my pathetic life? No, 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 Tex, you got me all wrong. <laughs> no, just because you turned me in and got me suspended and humiliated me in front of my peers. You sold me out. <laughs> but that's all in the past. See, I quit hating you for that weeks ago. Ah, like I said, I'll be leaving soon. And I didn't want to go with any loose ends dangling there to bother me in my golden years. <sighs> hey, don't worry about me. When you tossed me out of the agency, it was the best thing that ever happened. Digging through dumpsters and sleeping in abandoned speeders. You helped me learn a great lesson. Because no matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. So what happened to you? I heard you were doing pretty well there for a while. Did I help a job on that Martian memorandum case? What's your problem? You one of those people who can't live with success? Huh? Well, I can live with it. I'm just afraid of commitment. Now, you tell me something. Why wouldn't you talk to me 15 years ago? I was a stupid kid back then. You could have tried to understand why I told the ethics board what I did. I mean, I understand now that I was out of line and I made a mistake, but why'd you cut me off like that? Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a P.I. And never, ever betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. You gotta find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. They're a precious commodity to people like me and you. Now listen, before I go, I came here with a warning. I heard your name mentioned in connection with a case that I'm working on, and you stay out of it. If you don't, somebody's gonna find you floating in the bay with a hole in your head. And I don't need any more strain on my conscience. You know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Because I'm a pretty damn good detective. And I can take care of myself, thank you. No! Just remember what I said, Tex. Got no idea what kind of people we're dealing with here. Just keep out of my way. I'll send you a postcard. So last night, after 15 years, the colonel walks into my office, made me take a good hard look at myself. Maybe I have hit bottom, and maybe I do look like hell. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. I gotta find some work. Contrary to what the colonel might think, I'm as good a detective as he ever was. Now I just gotta prove it. I'm gonna scare up a job today, even if it means finding somebody's lost puppy. Well, it's great to have you back with us. So this is a brand new series. Tex Murphy, Under a Killing Moon. This was released about 1998. Old classic. Let's get straight into it. Let's, yeah, let's have a look around. Let's head over to the back of the desk. The office was actually a dance studio before I moved in.
Most of these desk drawers haven't been used for so long, I'm afraid to open them. As usual, it's a mess. Most of these desk drawers... As usual, it's a mess. So once I've clicked and you've already read it, I'll just nothing in here but a skip path. on by it. Don't want to keep him hearing the same old things over and over this again. Probably the only writing like a broken record. This here is my fa great pen. As usual, it's a mess. Most of these desk drawers haven't been used for As usual, it's a mess. Nothing in here but a stamp. One last $10 stamp waits patiently to be licked and ma- This here is my- Ah, Sylvia, my ex-wife. Whenever I think things can't get any worse, I think about her and how she totally screwed up my life. She's a woman who loves a man, any man, any time. I'll never forget the day I came home early and caught her with the upholstery man. Oh, there you are. I just got done with the chair. I'll be sending the bill to your husband. Oh, Rudy. Let's not think about my husband right now. I was, I was watching you upholstery and you're so big and strong. Do you really think so? Well, yes. God, I've only known you for ten minutes and I feel like I've known you forever. Oh, mm, yes, look. And look at this muscle. Oh. The way you hold me, Tex, Tex never held me like this. <clears throat> oh, kiss me, Rudy, and set my lips on fire. Okay. Oh, Tex, honey, I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Well, duh, obviously. Now I know why the Rota Rooter man keeps calling and asking whether we need our plumbing checked. Well, I got to admit, those chairs look pretty good. Uh, thanks. Listen, how about I don't charge you on the labor and we call it even? Fair enough. But from here on out, Rudy, customer servicing doesn't include my wife. See, honey? I saved you some money again. Aren't you happy? I married her for better or worse. Unfortunately, it never got any better. Okay, let's turn around. Let's have a look. Ooh, mail. Oh boy, mail. Oh boy, mail. As I just said. A pre-approved electronic shop credit card application addressed to the previous occupant. Just needs to be signed, stamped, and mailed. Hmm. Good job we got a pen, a stamp. Combined stamp, and then let's give it a squiggle. Surgery gift certificate. That's the door to the street. Let's head on down. The air outside feels thick, like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day, most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with a traditional P.I. breakfast. Mmm, <coughs> that hits the spot. Okay, let's head on down.
talk to this lovely lady. Chelsea's a hot little number. I hear she's a mutant, but it doesn't show. The only weird thing about her is she won't go out with me. Chelsea Bando's the kind that could hold her own with anyone, but she has a way of turning my knees to jelly. She's a mutant, just like everyone else in this part of town, but she's a real beauty. Well, hello, stranger. Tell me, gorgeous, has the new True Detective come in yet? Yeah, but you gotta pay for it this time. Hey, when you finish a magazine, it is in no condition to sell. Ooh, scorned. Sure. Kick me when I'm down. You think it's fun being broke? Well, you know, Tex, there just might be a job for you. Have you heard that Rook's place got robbed? No, I didn't. What do you know about it? Yeah, you know, I remember Rook told me about the burglary. You know, I remember a stranger hanging around the past couple of days. It might be a dead end, but I seem to remember that the guy had these bright green eyes and a tattoo of an anchor on his arm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Let's head over and go post our post in the post box. Post, post in the post box. Just go a bit closer. Postbox. The Postal Service has gotten much faster since the stamp price went to $10. I should get my credit card back tomorrow morning. Okay, now let's head into... Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Hmm. the words right out of my mouth. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. He's a crusty old World War III vet with a face like a raisin and a tongue like a butcher's cleaver. What do you want, Miffy? Fine. How you doing, Rook? I'm not in the mood for small talk. Fine. What do you want to talk about? Let me tell you about my great day, Murphy. Last night, someone broke into my pawn shop. I don't usually have anything of great value, but yesterday, I gave out a fair amount of cash for an extremely valuable diamond bracelet. How much is a fair amount of cash? In this case, $8,000. Boy, that's a lot of clams, Rook. Don't you think I know that? The bracelet was pawned by a young girl named Emma Nimpton. She said she hated to hawk a family heirloom, but had no choice. She said she would reclaim the bracelet in a month. Well, since the bracelet was worth ten times 8000 I loaned her, it was a good deal for me. I think you've been played for a sap, Rook. Maybe. She left me a number and I called it this morning, but the line is disconnected. Sounds like my vast experience as a P.I. could come in handy. Yeah, it couldn't hurt. The police are no help. A mutant is on his own when he gets robbed in this town. I'd appreciate your help. I'm not a rich man, but if you find the bracelet, I'll owe you a few favors, which could come in handy. Get back here and I'll show you where they broke in. Rook takes me out back and shows me where the burglar broke in. The back window is busted out and the latch is ripped. It's a sloppy job. As I start my investigation, I'm looking for information to enter into my crime link computer back at the office. One thing's for sure, Emma Nimpton won't be one of the suspect's names. Every P.I. worth his salt knows that's not my name spelled backwards. Hmm. Rook's been played. 
Okay, let's have a quick look around the crime scene. Broken glass. What is that? Footprint. Looks like a shoe print is outlined in that sticky pool of something resembling chocolate. Size Footprints 14. about a size 14. Like Rook always says, you can cut corners here and... Hmm. hmm. Looks like a key of some kind. Like Rook always says, you can cut... Shard of glass must have come from that broken window. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Looks like whoever broke into Rook's window left one of his hairs behind. Apparently our burglar is a carrot top. Hmm, redhead. Let's have a look over here. Ooh. Whoa! This antique boombox worked. I bet it'd only play the Bee Gees. This old relic probably hasn't worked in years. Hey, there are batteries in here. Okay, let's head on out. Oh, I would love to see my ex-mother-in-law squeeze through there. Cheeky, eh? Oh, I would love to see my ex-mother- Louis Laments runs the Brew and Stew, which is a local hangout. Bruin Stew is run by Louis Laments, a bloated mutant with a heart bigger than his waistline. Everyone comes to Louis's cafe. So does all the street talk. If something's going on, Louis knows about it. What can I do for you, Mike? Well, for starters, you could get me a job. I've forgotten what a paycheck looks like. I hear you, Mike. Last week, I had to lay off half my kitchen help. Times are pretty tough, but it could be worse. Oh, you're a true optimist, Louis. I remember, Mife. The only thing worse than an old optimist like me is a young pessimist. Rook's been robbed before. But he's never had anything really valuable taken. This is gonna set Rook back for a while. Too bad the cops have turned a blind eye. Okay, let's have a quick look around here, see if there's anything around. This is where Louis throws out the garbage. Street people come from miles around. Nothing in the bin. Nothing in here worth taking. Hey, that's what I just said. Well, this is a section of the Bay City Mirror. It's a weekly newsletter that covers local goings-on written by mutants for mutants. I'd subscribe if they had a comics page. Newspaper. Have a look at this article at the top here. Sounds like what happened to Rook's Pawn Shop.
Francesca Lucido makes the spiciest pizza in the city. The only thing spicier than her cooking is her imagination. And right now she seems to have a thing for me. Before we head in there, let's just go check the dumpster again. Oh, there's a hobo. Let's go talk to the hobo. Oh, looks like Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Yeah, what do you want? I'm looking for some information regarding the robbery at Rook's last night. Well, there are thieves everywhere. Someone just stole my radio. Sure, it was busted, but it was all I had. Man, like who would stoop to robbing the homeless? Whoever it was must be a real jerk. Boy, you said it. Now why don't you get lost? I've got to look for my radio. Oh, looks like Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Oh no, not you again. Look, I'll warn you right now, I'm almost out of chocolate syrup and I'm not in a good mood. Chocolate habit. Well, why don't you go buy some more? Oh, I forgot, you're a bum. Ooh. Spare me the insults, tough guy. If you got something to say, spill it. Well, I was just doing a little amateur sleuthing. God, you are a pest! Now let's head back over to the... Louis Laments runs the Brew and Stew, which is a local hangout. Interrupting me while I'm talking? Let's head to the Brew and Stew. Uh, what can I get you? You want to try a slice of my chocolate pie? I can get you a piece to go if you like. You read my mind. Oh, looks like Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Isn't a good time for a social call, punk. If I don't get a fix soon, I'll go insane! Dory me plus a lot to do! I don't make a practice of helping out addicts, but I think I've got something that will ease the pain. Don't hold out on me, man. If you've got something, let's have it. Praise heaven! You've brought the ambrosia of life! Ask me anything you want! I saw someone prowling around the back of the pawn shop last night. It was so dark, I didn't get a good look at him, but I could tell he was huge. Probably 6'3 or 6'4, about 300 pounds. And that's all we want? So no. Let's head back out the alley. Let's head to this last shop that we haven't been to. Francesca Lucido. The pizzeria. Well, well, it's that a handsome P.I. Tex Murphy. <laughs> Have you come to take me away? How'd you guess? You must have seen my white horse hitched to the railing out front. Oh my, Mr. Murphy, you certainly know how to excite a girl. Well, that's very nice of you to say, Mrs. Lucido, but I'm here on business. Oh, poo! All, all business and no pleasure makes even a private dick a dull boy. What do you want?
I heard that Rock's place got robbed. It scares me to death. There's so much crime in this part of the city. Me and Sal got married too young, and it's been up and down ever since. I've had enough of his drinking and the womanizing, and I divorce him in a second, but he's got a couple of buddies who are top lawyers. If I had some hard evidence of his screwing around, I could divorce him and get a decent settlement. Okay, let's have another look around. Let's have a look in the hotel. The Golden Gate Hotel was once known as the Waldorf of the Pacific. Its halls are still sturdy and the walls have worn well. But there's nobody living inside. Ardo Newpop is a gigantic goon who works at the front desk at the Golden Gate Motel. Ardo's no rocket scientist. In fact, he probably doesn't even know what a rocket scientist is. Ooh, harsh. My name's Tex, and I'm a PI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Okay. I think I've already seen the show before anyway. Captain Wallaby, your favorite show? It's my third favorite show. My favorite is the Inspector Burns Fire Safety Show. Why is that your favorite show? Because fire safety is very important, and I want to grow up to be just like Inspector Burns. Look, Ardo. If you'll answer some of my questions, I might bring Inspector Burns in to meet you. Would you like that? Okay. I can answer some questions, but first I have to put on my fire hat because Inspector Burns' fire safety show is going to be on pretty soon. I don't know what that is. I never heard nothing about that. You're no good to me. Well, thank you very much. That is all we have time for today. So, don't forget to like, subscribe, and even leave a comment down below. I've been EasyPeasy35Gaming, and you've been wonderful. Thank you very much.